Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today we'll be talking about that blizzard uh, potential. It's most likely going to be a blizzard because of the winds. Now, there's a lot of details that are still yet to be determined. The models are continuing to differ, though obviously there has been a bit of clarity for the past couple of days. More models have agreed on more things. So we'll be going over that to where the heavy snow may fall and uh, what kind of might come after this blizzard, the snowstorm. But I don't think we'll have time to talk about that in today's video. Otherwise, that would be a too long of a video and um, you guys wouldn't like that. And I wouldn't like uploading such a long video. So um, without further ado, if you guys are new to this channel, hello and welcome. I do stuff about the weather, weather hobbyist and people like to listen. I like to talk. It's a win-win, so if you're new, hello, consider checking out the channel, Ch consider checking out the other videos and see if this, um, this is something you'd like, and if you're a returning viewer, liking the video would be awesome. Otherwise, let's get into this video. We'll be looking at some high-resolution models and some long-range models, so we could get a, a better idea of this system, but again, the models are still d differentiating quite a bit, and... Uh, to be honest, the brutally honest, the biggest change that has happened is the snowfall amounts have decreased. Now, again, a lot of people are listening to me say that and are already kind of feeling uh, frustrated. Let me tell you that, you know, the amounts that we saw a couple days ago were just, quite frankly, unrealistic. We were looking at three to four feet of snow across portions of Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan. While right now, there could still be amounts that see over a foot easily, cities like Cleveland or maybe even Indianapolis. So, uh, definitely a, a still big system. The snowfall amounts have gone down. Yes, that is true. However, you know, the first set of numbers that we were looking at was were just unrealistic. They are now more acceptable, and the models have really, st you know, pretty much stuck with those amounts, not really changing them now um, they may obviously uh, it's still far out but we'll have to see okay so let's start off by looking at the GFS model here we have um, the hour at what the, the image is applicable as I push this into time you can see the hour changes every six hours this is um, the 12 a.m. or 6 p.m. as I'm looking right now is applicable to the central standard time zone if you live across the East Coast, it's going to be 7. If you live across the mountains, it will be 5. And the Pacific Coast, it will be 4. All right, let's start looking at this. Notice that as we push this into time, what we have going on is really not much as of now. We do have quite a bit of rain and some rain showers really scattered and isolated in nature across the southern United States, the Gulf Coast to be exact, really not much more further to the north. We do have a bit of snow shower activity across northern New Mexico and into western sorry, eastern Arizona, so th that is basically occurring right now and will continue to do so. There are winter weather advisories issued for those areas. Notice though, we also have a, a, a system across the northwest, which is delivering some rain, some snow, and that is providing us with the potential cold air in order for this system to tap into and obviously formulate that big blizzard, that big snowstorm that we could be looking at. Let's take a look at this. Notice, we have these two systems. 12 p.m. across the Central Standard Time Zone, Sunday, this is at around now 6. Notice that the cold air is delivering a bit of snow, or sorry, a bit of cold weather across the plains. This is some pretty chilly air, maybe even the chilliest of um, November, most likely, as again, if you recall, early November, there was 70s for much of the United States. We start seeing the low pressure from the Gulf Coast with those green, those light rain. Um, those light green, those yellow colors, that's right to, light to moderate rain, and that starts colliding with that cold air. And again, at the beginning, this starts producing a bit of snow, but that cold front starts kind of pushing the system off, and they're basically two, two forces that are struggling, right? And depending on how quickly that cold air comes here, how quickly it settles, the magnitude of it and the intensity of it will obviously determine how much snow and how strong the winds will be and the exact track of the system. So... Yeah, I pretty much said everything that's relevant to that storm just because of that little air mass. So that's why this system is going to be hard and will be uncertain about what it does up until most likely a few days. Maybe not even, maybe the day before it occurs. So um, notice this is the low pressure, right? It's moving up to the north, delivering lots of rain across Tennessee, Kentucky. And that's not going to be a snow for that, you know, for that location, for those, um, for this uh, area at this time, 6 a.m. in the morning, Monday. But as we push this forward, notice that we see a, a squashed high pressure right there. You can see very strong winds occurring, right? That will mean pretty heavy lake effects snow into portions of northwestern Indiana. And the reason for that is, well, because the strong winds and the concavity of these winds are basically going to push this lake effect snow band and make it as long as it possibly can be. 
you can see these winds are angled at a at a uh, certain a degree where the the snow when it if it were to occur would line up across the whole lake michigan and the snow that would fall into indiana illinois possibly a bit would be intense heavy and possibly you know some copious amounts of snow maybe six seven inches across northwestern indiana again lake effect is isolated so it may uh, differ and it's just really really hard to predict notoriously has been hard to predict and still is and most likely will be and that is definitely though a cause for concern as some models are showing some really high amounts with that notice we start seeing a lot of that snow at around 2 p.m 1 p.m 12 12 o'clock noon around that time into ohio michigan so detroit cleveland dayton indianapolis seeing some snow now again the gfs is struggling with this system it kind of goes through phases of weakening and intensifying it definitely pushes this system towards uh, the Great Lakes into Lake Huron, Lake Erie. And what that does is obviously allows the snow to linger for a good portion of into Monday night, Tuesday morning. Some pretty still heavy snow amounts. Obviously, the winds at this point are pretty strong. They are howling. Definitely, some uh, there will be a few counties with blizzard warnings at the bare minimum, if not just whole metropolitan areas depending on how that st strong that wind is, you know, it doesn't, you know, a blizzard does not have to have a single flake of snow falling, as long as it's on the ground and it's blowing, or it's just the certain qualifications, which is 35 miles per hour greater, reduced visibility, and as long as that is met with just a few, um, you know, light, light snow showers, there, there could be blizzard warnings posted. And uh, that usually surprises people, and it did me at the beginning, it surprised me as well, but that's, that's how blizzard warnings are issued. And that makes perfect sense. Notice that as we push this forward, really the northeast gets a lot of rain. We see another low pressure developing behind that. We can see continued snow a bit further to the north now across Canada. Um, Toronto a bit further to the north, maybe even to Thunder Bay, seeing some snow, the, the westernmost fringe. And again, the cold air kind of maintains itself. But at around Wednesday, Wednesday noon, Wednesday evening, it starts pulling away. Portions of Canada definitely seeing some light snow showers still. And then potentially another system forming, which we'll have to watch for. And that's why just because you didn't get store, uh, snow with this system doesn't mean you won't um, anytime soon. There's a lot of activity and several, mo several models are pointing towards some interesting, um, rather quite interesting scenarios. So this is what the GFS model shows. Again, you may be looking at these amounts and be disappointed. This is the global uh, GFS, so for example, the lake effect amounts are definitely not going to be accurate for this. They may be lower or higher, but they're not going to be accurate from a long-range model. Um, notice Ohio into Pennsylvania, West Virginia, seeing some snow. I think this is a bit underdone. The GFS is the model that shows the least amount of snow for the United States. It ran really Canada. It does show an area across extreme eastern Ontario, pretty much into western Quebec. I'm um, seeing a bit of snow, and you can see 10, 11, maybe even a foot of snow plus. And obviously where the lakes do line up, if I were to uh, zoom in on the Great Lakes area, you would see that by the lakes there are these, you know, basically these isolated pockets of heavier snow, and that's going to be the case as these winds are going to be hauling off the lakes. Howling, not hauling, howling off the lakes, and that will be producing enhancement of the lakes, especially or of the snow, especially since they're not frozen, so... They're at their prime to produce lots of snow, these lakes. Now, let's take a look at the model run prior to the latest one of the GFS, to say the new one one. Really, the GFS has been consistently showing kind of weaker amounts of snow. So, I mean, at least that's good that it's been consistent with it. It hasn't been jumping all over the place. But still, I mean, the thing is that even with the latest model run, it shows snow as far into Tennessee, Kentucky. While no foot or of snow with this model, it shows an inch or two, which is still could be um, a bit more uh, dangerous if you put those uh, with that, if you, you know, put snow into a leaf blower. <laughs> Pretty much that's what it's going to be like. The winds are going to be hauling, and obviously the first inch of snow or first two inches usually is where most accidents happen because once you get past that, you know, four, five, six, seven inches, either people take it more seriously or it just doesn't make much of a difference it's still slippery and still wet kind of like it would be with one inch of snow and notice let's take a look at some other models this is just one model i want to emphasize that if you were to look at the canadian you could see it shows quite a bit more and you may be actually surprised i am as well when i first saw this model i was shocked at how much uh, it's differenting differentiating itself from the gfs notice very heavy amounts 
Ohio, Indiana, especially eastern Indiana, Michigan, southeastern Michigan, really, to portions of Canada around the Great Lakes, Lake Huron, Lake Erie, west and north of those locations, seeing pretty good amounts of snow. And again, this one you could see portions into Kentucky and into Tennessee, seeing some considerable amounts of snow, four, five, six, seven inches, maybe even a trace into Alabama and Georgia. If this were to occur, this would be obviously a very significant snowstorm, a blizzard, a significant blizzard, no uh, sugarcoating that, except will this occur? Is the Canadian right? Now, it has, the Canadian has been um, deathly consistent. It's been pretty much unchanged, unfazed, and it has been consistent from the beginning, much more remarkably consistent than, say, the GFS. So if I were to go off of one model, GFS versus Canadian, without looking at any other models, I would say Canadian, right? But we also have other models to look at. So like the European and the GFS parallel. So this is a Canadian notice, lots of snow, lots of precipitation, obviously in the form of rain across the East Coast. If we were to take this into the rain slash frozen simulated radar and time it out, we would notice some remarkable differences in the snow as we saw, but it doesn't look that much different in terms of setup. We have that cold front, we have that little piece of energy from the North and the South. The system takes it generally the same track as the GFS shows it's taking. But look, the snow um, really transitions from rain to snow much quicker, much sooner, and it's intense, it's heavy, the winds are strong, a bit stronger, 995 millibars of, millibars of pressure, very heavy rains across the northeast. Again, if you live across uh, New Jersey, Connecticut, Rhode Island, any of those locations, even Pennsylvania, um, it doesn't look like as if this will be a snowstorm for you, and it's growing increasingly unlikely. Same goes to Chicago, Milwaukee, Green Bay, into portions of western and central, sorry, eastern and central Illinois. And uh, notice, though, that, again, the Canadian does the same thing as a GFS. It, it kind of fires this low pressure back into, the, into that cold air mass, adding on to those snow amounts. And once it does finally pull away, it obviously does leave quite a bit of snow. Just to show you, for the fun of it, uh, this is what the Canadian shows in a bit of the long term. Another pretty powerful system and more cold air, so the Canadian definitely is keeping things exciting. Again, that enthusiasm is not shared by all models. If you were to take a glance at the GFS parallel, this one comes out once a day, so unfortunately its model data is a bit older. Still though, may have a better handle. Let's take a look at this. Here's the, um, the snowstorm. The cold air is in place. We do have a bit of a uh, transition, more significant than what the regular GFS shows. It's falling heavily, it's falling quickly, and again, it, the, the, but the difference is that the storm is moving quickly, and it has its, you know, it struggles firing this storm back and kind of looping it around, if you will. And again, that would make a big of a difference as that would really add on to the snowfall amounts, especially if such a buoyant, moisture-filled storm would be producing snow in such a relatively chilly air mass. The snowfall ratios may be bumped up from, say, a 10 to 1 to maybe even a 15 to 20 to 1 ratio. And uh, notice that it keeps the storm wilding across portions of Quebec and Ontario, and obviously it does pull it away at around the Wednesday time frame. Definitely most reluctant out of all models. It keeps it up until early Thursday morning. And then in the long term, obviously, does show another snowstorm that's been consistent with other models as well. Except, again, the details are just um, beyond blurry on that. Total snowfall with the GFS parallel, um, they are pretty high. You can see Kentucky, portions of North Carolina, and even into portions of Tennessee, maybe seeing two, three, four. Cleveland out of this system, possibly seeing up to a foot, according to the GFS parallel. Same goes with Erie. The rest of Pennsylvania quickly drops off. It does concentrate a lot of the mounts across Canada into Toronto and maybe even some of the larger cities like uh, Quebec, uh, Montreal, Ottawa, seeing some snow depending on whether or not that shifts. And quite a bit across Ontario and Quebec to the north. This is just one model, however, and they have been jumping all over the place. If you were to take a look at the NAM 12KM, a higher resolution model, it goes out to 84. Notice that it's just beginning to show this storm, right? It shows really quite a bit across Canada, but it's still in progress, and it only, you know, it can only show up to 84 hours. And if I were to show you the rain slash frozen at this time, selected time, it's still going on, and possibly could still kind of backfire, which we'll have to see. The NAM is still not fully loaded. Neither is really any of the high-resolution models, but the thing is, it's important because none of them are taking a really far-fetched track that isn't unlike any other model. They are pretty uh, consistent with 
the three big ones as well you know the gfs parallel canadian gfs i will show you the european don't worry so this is the R gem. Notice the rain to snow transition happens quickly. Michigan, Ohio, Indianapolis, uh, Detroit, Cleveland. Uh, really seeing rain at this point. This is again nine o'clock in the morning Monday. You have the times right there. Kentucky, Tennessee, seeing some snow, and that's helped you know by that cold air being driven down from Canada. And you can see as seemingly this is pulling away, lots of rain. And I mean, you know, this thing will just be an absolute mess regardless of how much snow it produces. This thing has a lot of moisture. So the rain will still be a, uh, a problem. And notice that we do see some snow showers maybe as far as northern Georgia and Alabama. We'll have to see about that. Don't get too excited. It doesn't seem to be an absolute monster snowstorm for you whatsoever. But definitely a few flakes may be flying even in Georgia, Atlanta. So, and then, you know, as this thing seemingly pulls away, it starts developing a secondary low right here, which prolongs this, the occurrence of the system. And up until Tuesday morning, uh, this is how much snow that our gem has it uh, producing. I mean, you can see some pretty copious amounts, six, seven, eight, nine inches across portions of really the Cincinnati area, Indiana, Ohio, pushing into Cleveland as we go into Wednesday. Look at that, this is one of those models that shows ridiculously heavy lake effect across Indiana. If I were to put it in on regions and go to the north central United States, get a closer look, you can see right there it shows 11. Now again, as I mentioned earlier, this lake effect will be running along the, the line, you know, along the coast of, along the whole length of Michigan. So these, this, if it forms like that, will be producing very heavy snow. And let's take a glance at the well, let's take a glance at the RDPS. I'll show you the European last. This is a uh, a different little bit of a model on the Pivotal Weather, but it goes out to 84 hours as well. And let's go to its newest model, one the 18Z. Generally keeping consistent with what the other high resolution and the long range models are showing. You can see pretty heavy snow, lots and lots of rain with this. This thing, regardless again of how this produces, will be an absolute beast in terms of rain and winds. And obviously, it, it's uh, because of being so moisture fueled where the snow falls, it falls heavily. And you can see it takes that similar um, of what the other model is showing. So let's now um, take a glance at the uh, European model. That's the probably the, the better model that has been uh, really the European, I would say, hasn't been doing an amazing job with this storm, but I would still say it's more accurate than the GFS. Um, but I, I feel like it's definitely on par with accuracy with the Canadian. And the main difference this European shows is that it uh, is reluctant to transition the rain to snow a bit. Um, it you know, keeps it as rain for a bit longer. And once it does move into the northeastern United States, it moves out pretty quickly. It doesn't really shoot back at low pressure into the, back into their lakes. It tries slowing it down, but it's not nearly as efficient as, say, the Canadian is. Really, you know, diminishing some of those snowfall amounts. But they're still pretty heavy, and notice this thing, you know, possibly redevelops maybe across on uh, the Great Lake, or sorry, into Hudson Bay, James Bay area, which could still pr uh, provide a lot of cold air, which could possibly set up for another system, as you can see right there. But let's go over the snowfall amounts that the European is showing. And if you were to take a glance at this, um, you can see that they are definitely higher than the GFS, not as high as the Canadian, kind of in between. Cities like Cincinnati, seeing anywhere from, I would say, uh, four to seven inches. Uh, Indianapolis with this European model run showing at around one to two inches, so not that much. Northwestern Indiana definitely seeing a potential for some snow. The European underestimating that, but again, long range models are almost never used for lake effect snow um, amounts. They could be used for the setup, but the amounts are usually a bit off. Uh, Michigan, you know, Cleveland, Detroit, seeing six, seven inches across Detroit. Cleveland could get the brunt of this, maybe Erie as well, up to a foot, if not well over a foot. Kentucky, many locations also seeing um, anywhere from three to five, six inches of snow. So definitely a substantial event. Yes, it's not a historic snowstorm, but it will be a significant system. The Appalachian Mountains, seeing decent amounts, again, and the long range models sometimes do underestimate these amounts as mountains are notoriously hard to predict. And into Canada, we see quite a bit. And if I were to take this very long into the future, you can see more snow piles up on top of that. So we'll just have to wait and see. Again, the confidence on this first system is low, let alone that second one. The European um, from the, the 12 hours prior to the model I just showed you was showing uh, some quite lighter amounts across Ohio, Indiana. And you can see that it definitely went back onto the train of showing heavier amounts. So again, this hasn't been just a 
general clear trend towards later months you know it did show that at the beginning and then it kind of jumped back but with this video being now uh, well into the 20 minutes i want to call it a day um and exact and uh, again keep an eye to the sky on the radar your national weather service is the best um source this is what uh, the south bend office shows by the way if you want to show uh, see this map for your city Type in experimental probabilistic snowfall and then just add your city, like Northern Indiana, South Bend, Chicago, Cleveland, Detroit, Paducah, Kentucky, all those locations. It has a similar setup. So this is the expected snowfall through uh, the 1st of December on Tuesday. Again, the, the snow system would not be nearly over at this time. This is only as far as they go. This is the expected snowfall. This is the high end. So this the potential for this much again, not all over with. And then low end amount, which is, um, I think, unlikely, but, you know, as unlikely as this amount is right here. We'll have to see, though. Again, this may lean one way or another in the next few days. and most likely will. How heavily and which way is obviously the, the key. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.